Hello everyone and welcome to my walkthrough of Kirby 64 the Crystal Shards. I'm playing this on the Kirby's Dream Collection on a GameCube controller so that's pretty much how my uh, explanation of the controls at the beginning here is going to be. You can yeah, just move your crayon around to select the level or go back to the world map. But since there's nothing open to us, we have no other choice but to go to the first level. A D-pad to move, double tap it to run. You can tell when he runs because he's got those squinty eyes. Sort of like Brock. <laughs> uh, a button to jump, B button to inhale. You can't inhale all things as you can tell there. The stars, collect 30 of them to get a 1-up. You can see them appear in that meter at the bottom of the screen. I'm going to inhale this first enemy and show you what I can do with it. Like, while well, it's inside of me, that could be taken many different ways. <laughs> you could either spit it out or ingest it by pressing down on the D-pad. Uh, I'm going to show you the spit out method by it respawning, or it did not respawn. But Okay, I'll just ingest Bobo here and get its burning power to use on enemies. Yeah, this can even be used in midair. Whenever you have a power, it replaces the B button, basically. So, like, instead of inhaling, you're going to use the power with the B button. And pressing the L button will let you, I guess, regurgitate your power back out like that. And if you throw it at an enemy that has another power, like in this case, Sir Kibble's got the cutter, you can combine them. Fire sword! And that is pretty much Kirby 64 in a nutshell. You are a pretty overpowered character, actually. <laughs> But you are in pretty much all Kirby games, and because of your abilities and stuff like that, you pretty much decimate everyone and everything, and it's so much fun! <laughs> uh, it, the difficulty does ramp up later on in there, and wow, how did I manage to do that? <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna leave my power behind here, because I'd like to show you Cutter in on itself. Just watch this. This, this is kind of disturbing, actually. A piece of your body actually gets thrown. Yeah, you can even see the eyes on that boomerang. It's... Ugh. <laughs> so, obviously, the objective in this game is to get the crystal shards. There is three of them in each level, aside from uh, boss stages. And when you collect one, your butt... <clears throat> excuse me, your buddy Ribbon will pick it up for you. Well, sort of. You touch it and she picks it up for the collection. <laughs> And Maxim Tomatoes recover all your health. Those six dots there. Well, now they're all now they're six dots. They represent your health. Six, and you're dead, of course. Uh, let's go inside and face the first boss. This boss does pretty much nothing. Just look. <laughs> even even its flunkies here is doing absolutely nothing. You can either attack it with powers like so. Or, you can throw enemies like that at them, and yeah, it's really easy, but it's such a ridiculously easy boss, I can't help but find it humorous. And... let's go! <laughs> I'm over-explaining things as usual, but I always do that in the first part. It's nothing special here. Shots over here, they fall on whatever object they're sitting on. As you can see, they shoot little cannonballs. Uh, the food has different values of health recovery, power, It's a, it changes with each Kirby game, but it, it's usually one per uh, piece of food, except for the Maxim Tomato, which recovers all your health. And I'm going to need a bomb power up for a later area, so I'm just going to ditch that and grab you. Yeah! Bomb is kind of awkward to use if you don't know how it works. The, lo the longer you hold the B button, the further your bomb goes. Like, if you just tap it. Your bomb's not going to go anywhere, but if you hold it, it goes pretty far. So the trick with bomb is to hold the button for as long as you need to in order to get to whatever, I mean, you know, have, have it hit whatever enemy you're aiming for. Uh, why I need the bomb power is because there's certain kinds of barriers throughout the game that prevent you from getting crystal shards. This first one is black. Match the color, and it is, of course, the bomb power. Blow it up, there's a crystal shard inside. And... Boop. And, oh, nope, I need to get the hang of the bomb power up again. <laughs> anyway, the first boss of the game is right here, which is Waddle D. Oh, wait, wait, actually, no, it's not Waddle D. It is someone else. 
Wild Leaf seems... Oh god. Quite happy to have that crystal shard until he found out that he's being stalked. <laughs> by some sort of dark matter thing, no less. And it absorbs into him, takes control, and he turns into... A Waddle do! Oh no! What else? Well, I mean, what am I gonna do? I was gonna say, what else am I gonna do? But that wouldn't make much sense. If you don't have a power, you're gonna have to... In ingest his stars and then shoot him back at him, but that's pretty much his attack pattern right there He doesn't really do much other than that <laughs> It's pretty sad. Yeah, once you defeat him you will get the third and final crystal shard of the stage And be treated to a little cutscene And NZ is the replacement to Waddle D in this game because Waddle Dee is your buddy, so Waddle Dees in this game aren't really enemies. <laughs> well, in fact, there's only one Waddle Dee in this game. Alright, this this mini game right here, this picnic mini game, you press the A button to stop wherever direction you want to stop. You'll notice where his face is. And if you, his arms are pointing straight up, he won't get much distance on his jump. Pointing straight back, he will get a lot of distance. What I want you to do is aim for those question mark cards. They're known as enemy info cards. And they are completely randomized, unfortunately. So I can't really help you get all of them in this walkthrough because you just got to keep playing stages until you get all of them. In fact, you can even collect duplicate cards. It's that randomized. So it's really annoying to get all the cards and I can't help you with them. Anyway, let's go to the next stage and listen to the beautiful music. This game has such a nice presentation. Uh, whenever you start a stage, I recommend you turn back and look to see what's behind you to see if there's anything hidden there. There almost always seems to be something hidden there, oddly. Whoops. <laughs> Did not mean to do that, but I would like to show off more powers. Uh, ah, here we go. The stone power and I bumped my head on the platform. Get out of my way. I want to show stone. Um, as you can see, it doesn't seem to do much of anything, and you're really, really slow, but when you press the B button, it explodes in a flurry of rocks, and that, that rock explosion can hurt enemies, and the rock itself can hurt enemies. Uh, should I really... oops. <laughs> should I really explain all the powers in this game, since there's so many combinations? Probably not, but if you combine burning with rock, you turn into a volcano! It is pretty awesome. <laughs> There's just so much fun to combine powers and play this game, just even casually, just to see what you can come up with. I've seen all the powers before, but I mean, like on your first playthrough, it's going to be something that you're going to have a lot of fun with. And I'm going to grab that Maxim Tomato because I'm playing quite terribly while I'm explaining stuff here, and yeah, <laughs> I'm sloppy while I'm explaining stuff. But luckily, this is only lasting for the first part, as I always do in my walkthroughs. I just like to get everything done and explain in the first part so that, you know, everything else will flow nicely. So no need to worry about that. I'm not even gonna bother with them down by the Gordo there. It's too much wasted time. <laughs> oh, 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 oh! New power! Spark! It gives you a little electrical field. Uh, when you're standing in place, it's larger. When you're moving, it's smaller. But it essentially makes you pretty invincible. Kirby Games... You are a really powerful character. <laughs> oh, I wonder if there's an ice enemy around here. I think there is, if I remember correctly. Get away from me, pupas. Ah, here we go. This is why I want the ice enemy. Watch this. The most broken power in existence. Combine them. Prepare yourself. Refrigerator Kirby! <laughs> Not only does that food hurt enemies, but you can also collect it to recover your health. You are pretty much invincible. <laughs> I probably won't use this power all that much, but it's pretty ridiculous of how overpowered it is. This game, in general, is pretty easy. So, it, it just might be because you are so overpowered. But you are like that in pretty much every Kirby game, so what's the difference? <laughs> but Kirby games aren't really about the difficulty. It's about just having fun playing them. It's about the level design, the atmosphere, the general gameplay. It's just a fun game series, and that's what I love about them. 
All right, Crystal Shard coming up here. Gotta wait for a trail of stars leading downwards. They're coming up somewhere. And there we go, jump for them. There we go. Yeah! By the way, if you press the jump button in midair, you float like that. But you only have a limited amount of float in you. Here, I'll show you. I'll get up as... Well, I can get up pretty dang high. <laughs> and when he starts to lose his speed, he gets all sweaty and tired out, and then he drops. So he doesn't have unlimited float like in other Kirby games. It makes it less broken, but it's still pretty broken. No, no, wait, don't go down there just yet. Maxim Tomato. And the one-up. One-ups give you extra lives. You can see the life counter at the bottom left corner. That's just standard video game fare. Attack with the fridge! <laughs> you don't stand a chance against my Swiss cheese! There we go, that's a second... <clears throat> I was gonna say star. <laughs> no, it's a second crystal shard. And... meet Adeline! She's painting a beautiful picture of nothing in the woods. <laughs> and oh boy, maybe she was painting that dark matter critter. I don't think so, to be honest. Those dark matter guys are known as bow, actually. Don't know why they're known as bow when the fire runs are known as bobo. Anyway, this is the boss! And she makes a bunch of enemies from past Kirby games in sketchy form. And you know what? I really shouldn't use that power. It's way too broken. Brontal Birth, I'm gonna eat you. But then again, that's pretty broken in on itself. Because <laughs> the enemies just go down in one go. Yeah, it's pretty much no issue whatsoever. And this this next enemy is pretty interesting. It's is it like a censored enemy or is it like a it's not a glitch because this happens each and every time you play this. <laughs> the designers completely in, intended that. And it's I have no idea what the heck that is. I think it's supposed to be like a glitch enemy as a joke. Although maybe it could be like a boob or something. Maybe I mean, that's why it's censored. <laughs> uh that was just terrible dodging on my end. If you don't have a power, you got to use the ice cubes to defeat this guy, and that's all. <laughs> Uh-oh, it's not all. There's actually a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, I knew that. And you can't inhale an enemy like this. You just gotta wait for it to spew stuff at you and jump over it when it di dives for you. If I was using the fridge power, I'd get through this a lot faster, but that's kind of like... I mean, that's kind of why I got rid of the fridge power. Because I wanted to give myself a little bit of a challenge. And whoop. Jump rope over the dark matter flower! Actually, I'm not sure if it's a flower, but it's certainly got a shape of a flower. It's a, it's a sketchy flower dark matter thing, and there we go. And now she comes down to take you on! Aren't you going to give me something eventually? Come on. Because I know I can't suck you in. <laughs> See, as I said, if I had the fridge power up, I'd get through this a lot faster. Well, maybe I was supposed to have the fridge or some sort of power to defeat you. I could just run into you. <laughs> Because I know that does damage to enemies as well, but I guess that's the way they wanted you to do it if you don't have a power. <laughs> I never was actually powerless in that battle before, so I thought I would try it to do something a little bit different there for myself and like, make it interesting for you. There's the last Crystal Shard! And the cutscene to boot. And Adeline recovers while Ribbon picks up the other Crystal Shard and combines it with her ever-growing Shard total. Guess what? We got a new companion! Yeah! It's pretty awesome. Oh god, these cards. <laughs> Alright. Yeah! Yeah, I got it. I, I might as well show you that right at the end of the part here. Oh, and I should also show you on the level select screen here. You can tell if you've missed any crystal shards. See those three scribbly diamonds on there? If they're hollow, like that, that means you missed a shard. I mean, if, if some of them are hollow, hollow like that, 
you missed a shard, and you can go back to any level you've played before to collect shards. You don't have to worry about that whatsoever. Anyway, I'm going to go back to the uh, world select screen. Somehow, I don't actually think I can do it from here. Hold on. <laughs> I reset the game to get back to the... Yeah, title screen. Because I gotta get back to my save file in order to show you what I'm talking about here. So, in order to see the enemy info cards, you go to the options. I'm not, I'm not gonna do the mini games yet, those are gonna be like the last things. So you go to enemy info, and you got nine pages worth of these cards to get. There's one right here. This is Blowfish, and we haven't seen that enemy yet, so this can actually spoil some stuff. There's Tick. Classic Kirby enemy right there, and that's all the cards we got. As I said, I'm not going to aim to get all these in the walkthrough because they're completely randomized and I can't help you with that whatsoever, but I'm just mentioning the cards to you just so that you have something else to collect if you would like to do so. You don't have to get all of them in order to get 100% on your save file, they're just there like an, as an extra thing. So anyway, I'm going to end off this part here. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next part when we start this level.